What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to another tutorial. This one's gonna be a little different. It's gonna be more golf related. Something you guys know I love to do. A lot of what my YouTube channel is based on. Um, so on TikTok and some other like uh, Instagram questions, I've gotten how do I trace my ball? The tracer that I do when I use my drive or if I'm on a par five and I'm hitting my second shot. Um, a lot of people use an app. I don't use an app because I film with GoPros. Um, it's tough to film with my phone out there like that all the time and to be able to trace each shot. Courses are super busy here in California. So I use this handy little rig that I'll show. It's basically two GoPros on this cheap little Amazon stand that I bought. I wanted something very flexible, very on the go. So the top GoPros is uh, oriented so it shoots for YouTube. And then I have this secondary on a clamp shooting in the orientation for TikTok because I post a lot on TikTok. Um, so with uh, I only shoot about two or three holes in the, in the orientation for TikTok. And then the rest I shoot hole per hole for go on my GoPro for YouTube. Um, so that works out really well. But I'm trying to kind of like optimize so I don't have to like do double editing and stuff like that for YouTube and TikTok. So later in this tutorial, I'm going to show you this neat little trick that I learned in uh, in Premiere that I can use my footage on tic in TikTok, but just shoot it in, in 16 by 9 format on my GoPro. So let's jump into this tutorial. I got Premiere already set up, so I'm going to jump into Premiere. So let me actually show you one thing really quickly is uh, the tracer itself in a previous um, project. Let me just go to here. Uh, let's turn that down and you'll see I got to fast forward because I didn't film the first hole on this one. If you haven't noticed, if you have, want to know why, watch the video. So you'll see my tracer on this one. It's pretty straightforward. It's just a stroke path with the taper and then I just animated the start and end positions. Um, and then I do that for every hole. So I actually create it, I create the cut in Premiere and then I fi figure out the cuts that I need for my tracer, bring those clips into After Effects, create the tracer, then render it out and bring it back into Premiere. Yes, it is a ton more work, but I'm not limited to have to like reshoot stuff while I'm on the course on my cell phone if I don't get the tracer shot or if I don't get the right shot. This way I have a little more control in post. So let's jump back into the Premiere project itself. And uh, you'll see here, I'm gonna actually just import the footage in to the bin. And I'll just bring this in. We just need the golf footage. Don't mind the other footage and stuff that I'm going to be using to build the tutorial. So once this guy imports, I'm going to bring um, this piece in. Just create a new timeline. Or should, no, I accidentally created a new bin. Let's <laughs> go back. And there, now I should create a new timeline. So that, that have this piece. I think this clip is from... Uh, Lake Chabot. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to bring two different like elements in here. I have one element where the drive actually is relatively straight. And then I have one that kind of hooks, which is this one. It goes to the right. So I kind of wanted to show different elements. So what I usually do is I think I have a second clip here that I wanted to bring in too. Yep. This is Poppy Ridge here in Livermore. So what I generally do is I go to the clip, find where I'm about to hit. And then I put a little bit of tail in front of it, cut it delete the rest of that out because I don't need it and then get it there and then to a point where I think it had kind of has hit um, I'll edit the cutout to like where I want the piece to be but when I actually trace it I'll just cut the piece that I need so like the ball probably landed at this point so I'll make the cut there and then I'll leave the rest of the cut in there just for the actual video itself so then this next piece same thing same deal um, let's just go to the like this is probably not the best example to trace but I don't know why I picked this clip but we'll continue with it uh, even though you can't see the ball so, but we'll just pretend like we know where the ball is so there's a swing get a little bit ahead before the swing cut that out and then you're seeing too far so let's come back and I'll probably just use this and cut Cut. I'm just gonna take this piece out for the sake of it. I was just explaining what I do when I create my cuts. Oops, take not that one, this one. So now that I have the two cuts, let's pretend like the whole timeline is there. What I usually do, and the great thing between Premiere and After Effects is I can copy and paste the footage. So this exact clip will come into After Effects once I create the comp. So let's copy it and then bring After Effects up. I think I have it minimized. So right here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'll have to readjust the comp in Premiere is I'm just going to create a 1920 by 1080 comp and it's, it's already set for me. So I'm going to just hit OK and let's do this to fit so you guys can see the clip better. Then all I'm doing is pasting the clip and it brings it right in. Boom. Right where the playhead is. So wherever your playhead is, that's where it'll paste. So now I'm going to hit O to get to the out point of the actual clip. Then hit N and then that trims my comp size down then I can actually trim it even more for this sake I'm just doing it just so we can have a better better view of the layer so there you have the clip you can tell that I'm shooting in 4k on my GoPro so that's why it looks a little blurry but if I hold option command F it'll resize the actual footage to fit the comp size so it's 1920 so then now we can actually get into creating the fun stroke so let's find find that little p part where it's actually gonna make contact and that's where your stroke will actually start. So the fun thing about creating the stroke is you can create whatever color, whatever thickness, however you want the stroke to look. You can make it look straight. You can make it look like an arc. Um, and this is the great thing about being able to do it in After Effects. You can control what you want the stroke to look like. So all I'm gonna do is create three points. So I'm gonna mimic like the start point of the actual like impact of the ball, then create the apex, and then I'm gonna create where it lands, right? So there's my shape. Well, obviously we don't want that, right? So let's collapse this down. This is the hard way to do it. If I would have just done this in the beginning, it would have probably been easier. Let's turn the stroke on and then turn the stroke off. And then for the sake of this, I'm just going to use like a red outline because that's what I use in my actual um, videos. And then you're just going to play around with however you want the stroke to look like. So, there, so there's a width. So then if you go down and like um, actually you can round out the edges so it looks nicer. And then you once you get into taper, that's when you can get into the fun part of like what you want it to look like. See, so now it doesn't have such a like harsh, thick edge to it. And then you could do the same thing to the end. And so that way you can have like this kind of curvaceous kind of thing. And so to bring even more curve into the stroke, what you can do is actually bend the path. So I know this is getting very technical, but I mean, it's pretty, once you kind of get the groove of it, it's pretty simple. So like in this case, what I usually do is I mark out like where I hit. So like there's impact. And so like now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the pen tool up here and then go into the vertex tool so that I can actually move these points. So if I hold down command, I can move this point wherever I want. So like every clip is going to be different because the T-box and the placement is all different. So if I hold command down, I can move that point. Then it hits. So I follow the ball. See the ball is like right relatively there. So I'm figuring like the apex of the ball will be like this high. And then it actually landed over here somewhere. So the cool thing about this is, is you can continue to play with it however you want, like the stroke, the thickness, and then like you can mess with the opacity of it so it's not completely like solid color so that you can see through through actually like the rest of the play, playing field, playing field, wow, the rest of the course. So I'm still in the vertex mode thing. So if I hold this, then I have this point right here, right? So and then I can make the bend, right? So then I can get fancy with it. Right, so then when I actually create the stroke path, it'll look like it's going woo and then come back down and that's its landing point. So playing with how you wanna animate the stroke is always fun. So obviously there's your start point to where you want your, your stroke path to start. So let's come back, let's put this down here. And what we're gonna do is we are going to add a trim path fun little guy to add and then so this is going to create where how we can animate our start to stop see how it came back down to its starting point i'm messing with the end aspect of the the trim path so we bring that down to zero we hit a keyframe and then we come up and the ball's trajectory goes fast right so we want these keyframes to bust out fast too so we don't want to go too far out so you can see like there's the first set of animations right and then we come back down and then we'll finish it off and kind of comes to a hundred percent and then that's when you'll do the start aspect of it so then the end of the taper can come back down to where the ball actually landed and then what you do is just continue and then poop and then that one goes to a hundred percent so if i take the cursor off of the layer you'll see it goes animates outward and then it comes back down and then the end of it will come back down and poop and there's your tracer 
and the cool thing about this is is like you don't have to be fancy with it i don't i really literally just come in here and mark the mark the positions off i bend the curve a little bit just to put a little bit of oomph to it and then i slap an alpha render out and then put it back into premiere i really am just trying to kind of just give some more guidance to the ball because obviously the gopro doesn't do that good of a job following the ball but you could tell you can come in like okay now i see the ball is there so with my vertex tool i can bring it out here so that I'm even more accurate on like where the ball's going and like where it actually landed. So that's a great part of it. And then you saw like actually maneuvering it through it and editing it is very easy. Like let's say you have another clip. If I use a vertex tool, that'll take that like curve that I put on that anchor point off. If I hold command, I can move it. Now let's say if I shank the damn ball like <laughs> to or have a huge draw, right? Like see, I can create that animation and it still creates its path right so this is the great part about the control with this is like i can do my own paths and obviously i don't have to rely on some app or some tracer app to do it because sometimes they're not that accurate and sometimes they're just really not good so if you're familiar with after effects and premiere and you do like a lot of content creation and you golf do this but i am working on a, a premiere plugin um, that I'm working with another gentleman on where we can create a Mogurt file from After Effects which is a like a, a template you can use in Premiere that you can actually edit in Premiere. Um, if you're familiar with Essential Graphics that's basically what that file is. So what we're trying to do is take a null and parent it to each one of these vertices so that when we actually move into Premiere we can position move the null and that'll move one of these anchor points past. Um, that's the goal of the plugin. Um, <laughs> still in work of progress. Um, that would eliminate this whole step of After Effects, but I'd still have the same control of changing the color, changing the opacity, and changing the three points that I have uh, in Premiere. So I wouldn't have to go into a whole new application, and I can kind of customize it right there and then in my cut too. So that's the end goal with this. So. I mean, have fun with it. You know, you don't have to stick to the colors and the things that I do. You can even do it with putting, right? Like, so just instead of creating like an actual arc, you could just create like little bumps, right? Like if you just did like a line and you just did like this and like, and then obviously you got to control the path a little bit more and they did it like that. And then do it like that. You can have something go boop, boop, boop. So you can trace your putts. I mean, you could get very creative with this. This is a, the limitations are there. It's endless with this. And that's why I think it's cool that you can kind of just do your own thing, right? And just all you would do is just add another trim path to that and it'll look like it's bouncing, right? So a lot of videos that you see on YouTube when they're hitting the green and it looks like you're showing you the, you're showing you the path of where it lands and closest to the hole. This is kind of how they do it. This is kind of more uh, coming into After Effects and animating on top of your live action footage. So comment down in the comment section if you have any questions. I know I kind of flew through how to kind of maneuver through After Effects, but um, feel free to ask any questions and I'm happy to, you know, help you out. I'm happy to even create a starter project for you for After Effects and give it to you so that you can use it. Um, and the simple way of, uh, you know, uh, exporting these is what I usually do is just turn off that. Then I come into here and I hold command option M or you can just come into add add to a uh, render queue. And then I have a preset that's set to alpha export. But I mean, ideally you would just come in here and just do RGB plus alpha and hit OK. And that'd be the same thing. And then figure out where you need to save it, save them out. And there you go. And then you put these on top of the footage. So let's just actually do that. You know, just for the sake of showing you since we're here, I'm just going to stick it in that golf footage. We'll just do the comp right there. I'll hit render. Then I'm going to jump back over to Premiere, come back in, load that comp up, and then put it on top of here, which will always match. And then if you play it back, there's your curve, right? Obviously, it's not set the same. That's because this composition is set to... Uh, 4k so if I jump this down to 1920 by 1080 uh, and then I scale to frame size Because um, I usually edit in 1080. I haven't jumped to 4k yet um, there. There you go okay. Boop. Right, so comes out pretty cool. It's an easy way to kind of control your own um, You know tracers and so the other one that I wanted to show you the other cool thing is, is I have a clip here of me talking which I often am doing now So this was a uh, when I was playing spyglass 
um the cool thing about what i did here is i didn't shoot anything in the in the orientation for tiktok um that was what i was kind of like shit about but i ended up finding a way um where premiere has auto reframe so if i come into let's say and i have this whole clip and i'm like oh, okay i want to put this on tiktok right um i'm gonna kind of condense it down just so you can kind of see like how it works um let's just stop here and cut this down and now we have this clip right now let's say if i wanted to do this this is the comp right here that we're doing all i do is here and go to auto reframe right you have to play around with this a little bit but it's a great tool to have so now i just want to go 9 by 16 which is vertical for tiktok uh i haven't really fully figured out what these all kind of do but i'm assuming if you have a lot of movement to your thing this can kind of use as like a progression default so like if you have slow remote if you have like really fast jerky movements it'll do slow motion uh, i just leave it to default and i figured out that if you nest the clips it actually keeps it retains all like the layer structure as well so if i go to create there you go there's my TikTok orientation footage and, and that actually the cool thing is is it keyframes on the footage like the position of where i'm at which is the cool thing okay so it doesn't show it because it's nested but regardless so you could tell like um the camera is pretty i'm pretty good with holding the camera and where i want it to but this is the great thing about this is so imagine if i have my entire cut and which i did from spyglass and poppy hill i just hit that auto reframe button and it literally created the entire sequence for tiktok already for me then i just went in and created like super cut so then i just took like minute segments out of there that i wanted to grab and i put in and out markers and i exported them so i was like cool now i have like four videos i can put on tiktok and i don't have to go out and film anything so i'm gonna try to utilize this a little more just because my goal for 2021 to film my golf is not going to be stroke for stroke like i have been doing it i will do that every so often once i play a new course but the likely chance of me traveling a lot right now with covid is not going to be too high so we'll be playing a lot of the courses that you've already seen but i'll be filming it in a different format and hopefully with a new camera too so again like subscribe comment comment if you have any questions about premiere or after effects i know i kind of flew through a lot of this too so and i kind of showed a lot of different things too so but feel free to ask questions ask me if you want a project file i'm happy to set one up and set up like a taper stroke for you that you can use on your own um with that i'm out thanks guys I thought I had a single screen. Uh, I guess not. Okay, let's let's.